Namaste, Soul Circle, and Happy New Year. Happy New Year 2021. Oh, yeah. Mm. On today's video, we will be giving you a rundown on what to expect from Arcana over the course of the month of January. And we're also going to give you a glimpse of what to expect uh, looking further than that down the road. But before we do that, we thought it might be nice for you to get to know us a little bit better. So I'm Candace. Um, I'll start from the very beginning. <laughs> when I was a wee young child. <laughs> so from a really young age, I have always felt the pull towards the metaphysicals and the energies of the people around me, um, which meant that I spent a lot of my time thinking I was just overly emotional and probably being told that a lot too. Right. Um, but through my journey of, of uh, self growth and self love, I came to understand that I'm actually an empath and a healer by nature. So integrating my experiences as a support worker, uh, a mother, a woman of color, and with my degree in behavioral sciences, um, I'm able to dig deeper into my spirituality with a variety of modalities that align with both Western ideals of healing and holistic principles. What about you, Stephen? What's your story? Well, hello, <laughs> friends. <laughs> my name is Stephen Michael James. And I am a spiritualist. Um, I've done a lot of different modalities so far in my life, and I love integrating them all into medicine that helps serve people get to their highest good. Um, I'm a certified Reiki master. And as of last year, I became a spiritual life path coach, which I really love working on so far. And um, I'm also a master crystal healer too. So a lot of different holistic practices uh, and I love integrating them uh, in all different ways possible. So, uh, but this all started a lot longer ago than that. Um, I was a hereditary practitioner. Um, my grandmother was a wise woman and I was raised with a lot of knowledge around me about lunar cycles and how to integrate them. Um, I always remember her working with different plant medicines, uh, there was a lot of crystal work. I remember always practicing hermetics with her and um, things like astrology and tarot and um, all of the zodiac and I spent a lot of my life fascinated with how much awesome power is in nature and animals and um, just in the people around us and what we can create. So my grandmother, she taught me the ways of handling being an empathetic channel as well. Um, so that I wouldn't be too overwhelmed at such a young age. I feel like it's very easy to get swept up and lost and not un understand your feelings at mm -hmm. any age. Mm -hmm. But as a child, sometimes you're just told <laughs> to stop you're being too so emotional. emotional. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I so. didn't have that grandma, but <laughs> right. sounds lovely. <laughs> Honestly, I am so blessed to have had that in me because she really did give me a lot of lessons on how to work with it and what was going on. And um, I can't say my parents were on that same mm -hmm. wavelength, but my grandparents really were, which I am very grateful for all of that knowledge. Um, as I grew up, I noticed that everyone was always telling me that I was so lucky that things were happening to me and um, that all these things just came so easily. But what I didn't realize is that everyone around me wasn't like trying to manifest using mm -hmm. the wheel of the year. They weren't looking at correspondences in nature and things mm -hmm. like that. So I realized that in, um, in my practice, I love to share this information. I want to help people manifest who they are. And I, I, I think together we really do want to bring each other up and bring the people around us up mm -hmm. in our community here. Absolutely. It, it's a huge focus for us. So when Candace and I met, we started developing a friendship as modern day urban spiritualists mm -hmm. who used our practice to raise our own vibrations and heal our own past traumas. And I think we'll, we'll definitely um, do a separate video on some of those details and some of that information about the timelines and the work that we've done, the work that we're doing um, throughout our lives and what we've done together individually. Mm -hmm. I think it's really important because these things don't, they don't get healed or fixed like this. And some things, there are always gonna be something that you have to continuously work on. I know for myself, I can't speak for you, but there are certain things that are always gonna be with me and I need to know that I have to continue practicing and keep working and and to maintain my peace. Yeah, right? and, and this is why we chose to name our program Conscious Co-Creation, because we are doing the work with you this year. We are walking the wheel, we are 
doing it alongside of you guys. Having both been from marginalized communities, uh, I'm a gay male. I'm a woman of color. Uh, we wanted to create an inclusive spiritual community where people can explore earth-based traditions as a method of their own healing. If you found your way to this video, we want to welcome you to the Arcana family. Welcome! <laughs> and together we will consciously co-create our highest version of ourselves. So you might be thinking, what is a spiritualist? Being a spiritualist is having the ability to navigate the field of consciousness that we've created as a race and to take a step back for your own self-development. We tune in to what is and what has always been. The primary way in which this creation occurs is through the focus of our own intentions in correspondence to all the energy streams that always have and always will continue to surround us with or without our focus. Our conscious co-creation program is here to give you the necessary skills as a spiritual being to help direct your own healing with goals of ultimately being able to define your own future through manifesting. Most spiritual practice comes from to us in what we call correspondences. Mm -hmm. uh, these tools ranging from crystals, smudges, oils, colors, trees, music, movement, somatics, linear cycles, even mantras and words to say, which help align and focus your vision. Keep in mind, just because you can use correspondences doesn't mean you have to. This is so important. You yeah. don't need all of the things. Yeah. Um, so, it, which makes it very accessible. Yeah. Because not everyone's going to have tools or know all of this information right away. But adding a layer will only build strength in your focused energy. For example, um, if you don't have the right crystal, it mm. doesn't mean that you can't do the practice. I, I, as we move forward, I really want to empower you that you don't need all of the tools just yet. The longer you're in this, I'm sure you will develop your own little mm -hmm. kit and we will be developing these things. Uh, correspondence is a huge topic, which we will um, continue to cover for most of the year. Um, but first we have to begin with one of the most paramount practices of ceremony, which is the medicine wheel. Our topic for January and February is giving you the skills of calling in the elements, my favorites, and how to create a, cont a contained sacred space ready for energy work of all kinds, really helping you drop into the moment and, and feel ready to do whatever work it is that we're gonna focus on. Yeah, anytime you're raising energy, it's very important to make sure that you do have a, a safe container in which you're doing your mm -hmm. work to make sure that it is focused and aligned with what you're trying to achieve. We create balance in our practice by calling in the surrounding energy streams from the four sacred directions. This is a tradition that has been witnessed by pre-Christian cultures like the Mesopotamians, the Egyptians, a lot of the Mesoamerican cultures, and almost all indigenous cultures from around the world. Mm -hmm. Though you might find variation of the correspondences to each of the sacred directions. Um, for example, the Celtic cultures of Northern Europe have slight variation when compared to the indigenous Lakota medicine wheel. Um, you have to consider when and what these people's lives looked like. Mm. Uh, when we are talking about the wise animal energies of different directions, we may put bear in the north in some cultures, where others might have stag. Um, though some cultures don't have either of those animals. So based on where you are indigenous in the world, these traditions may have a little bit of variance, but it is important to consider um, what the energy stream of these animals or these correspondences represent. What we will encourage you to do is take the knowledge we give you here and adapt it to see to how you see fit. Uh, do some research on your own and adapt the corners with what resonates most with you. Also, because this is a global community, those in the Southern Hemisphere maybe have directions on their wheel in reverse to our explanation. Mm -hmm. But again, depending on the timeline of your culture's establishment, there may be some differences. For the month of January, we are gonna dive into what we call the horizontal plane of the medicine wheel. So let's start with an overview of that. Okay, in the East, we have the element of air. Hi, nice <laughs> to meet you. So um, air represents clarity, new beginnings and intentions. And this is also associated with yellow, dawn, gold, spring, incense and smudges. The zodical <laughs> correspondences are Gemini, Libra and Aquarius. Our bird energies live here. So not all, not all of them, mostly associated with um, hawk, butterfly and eagle. 
Next, uh, we have the south, which is the element of Hi. fire. <laughs> this is where transformation and transmutation lives. This is um, the color red, the season of summer, high noon, candles, bonfires. Candace. Candace. <laughs> <laughs> the zodiacal uh, correspondences are Aries, Leo, and Sagittarius's. And um, the animals are a lot. Um, but mostly, most commonly, we see snake energy as being the element of transformation. Uh, next we have the West. Mm -hmm. <laughs> our, our greatest loves are our in the West. Our greatest loves. <laughs> uh, that's the element of water. This is where healing and prosperity live. The color blue is here. This is where our tears live. <laughs> <laughs> it's also mother energy. And the zodiac signs are Cancer, Scorpio, and Pisces. Yes, Scorpio is not a fire sign. <laughs> um, we correspond to, they correspond to um, evening, the setting sun, autumn, sacred oils, and wine. Mm. Uh, <laughs> the guides here, <laughs> the guides here vary based on the aquatic life of the region. Over the years, um, I've seen it represented via dolphin, um, different forms of fish, frogs, and even crow energy. Lastly, we have the north. Uh, that is the element of Earth. This is your grandparent energies. This is where wisdom lives, lessons of patience, of uh, pers perseverance. Mm -hmm. Hard lessons. Yeah. <laughs> um, often this quarter is represented with either green or black. Um, and the zodiac here is Taurus, Virgo, and Capricorns. Um, correspondences are winter, midnight, um, and often represented by soil and flowers, and all the slowest moving animals energetically live here. We have stag, bison, mm -hmm. bear, a lot of the wise animals. Each week in January, we're going to focus on one of these directions. Our first episode of the week is what we call integration and release. Mm -hmm. It's here we will give you some soul searching questions for you to dive into your own relationship with these elements and get to know us better um, as we do the work live with you. It'll be a great chance for you to get to know to know us better and yourself. Midweek, uh, we're going to release an audio where we will be reading in honor of the elemental quarter we're focusing on that week. So by the end of the month, you will be able to call in the medicine wheel in your own sacred space. But it is also to learn how to live in correspondence in your everyday life. Also, um, be on the lookout for our sacred pause series. As you can see, we have sound bowls and sound bath, and this is gonna be our series where we get to relax together and do some healing. Mm -hmm. um, we'll be having our new moon ceremony to set our intentions in January and our full moon two weeks later for some divination. I think we'll pull some cards this month. Mm -hmm. And maybe mm -hmm. the next month do some cooking or yeah. some movement. It's really dropping in. Um, throughout the next 12 months, we will also be following the Wheel of the Year. And that is when we recognize the different solstices and the equinoxes and the cross-quarter high holidays. Mm -hmm. And it's using that wheel in which we are going to do our greatest work in our Conscious Co-Creation series. I can't wait. I'm so excited. I'm super excited and I'm ready. I am ready. And we can't wait to meet you. So please leave some comments below. Um, let us know that you're going to be tuning in and what parts of what we have talked about today you're most excited about. Yeah. Because for us, we really want to provide a community that is accessible for everyone to learn and heal and not be afraid to ask questions yeah. or, or be seen. So yeah. please. Feel heard. Yeah. Feel welcomed. Feel loved. Be yeah. part of something. I love you. I love you too. And we love you. <laughs> Welcome to Conscious Co-Creation. Welcome. Much love. And on we go. <laughs>